Uh, on behalf of myself, Henry Aitaler, uh, Organization Ready for Life, South Africa, as, as well as my co-presenter, Sandra, on the Kraak Breakthrough Foundation in the Netherlands, I would like to welcome everyone to our webinar on, of course, the DICOM 2.1 webinar. Uh, I'm going to allow each one quickly to introduce himself or herself. Just state your name quickly. Uh, and then, uh, if possible, just to answer the simple question, uh, what digital skill that you learned recently? Uh, any skill that you've learned recently? I'm going to ask Sandra to be first. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Uh, a small skill that I um, have learned recently using in Canva, uh, a, dig uh, a video. So I discovered in Canva where I create um, uh, images, visuals, that I also can create a short video and upload that to Facebook for um, s yeah, specific purposes. That's what I've really learned. Yes, thank you. I'm Nerys from uh, Lithuania and I'm one of the partners in this project uh, by Nectarus organization. And uh, I, uh, my recent learning of digital skill is actually related to video. Uh, I was uh, recording a couple of video interviews for one of the online course where I'm uh, uh, working on. And I needed to edit a little bit uh, the intro, outro, some parts of the video where uh, it was empty or no, no, any uh, substantial information. So I learned how to use iMovie slowly and uh, and a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so for me, I have learned two recently. Actually, um, I had a, organized a surprise party for my husband, and so um, I put together like a video um like a digital story so using pictures from his childhood date so i used a tool called animoto he launched a podcast so basically yeah i, I learned how to podcast create podcasts <laughs> tech um and the skill i've learned most recently was um on canva i've been using canva quite a lot uh, but specifically to make PowerPoints um, on Canva. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, myself, Henry. Uh, ready for life. Uh, I didn't actually learn a skill, but I was introduced to something new, which is Powtoon. My daughter, uh, also uh, a teacher, she just started teaching this year, and she actually created cartoons using Powtoon, and it was so fantastic to see. So I'm also going to explore that. Thanks, thanks everyone. Uh, second screen, uh, Sandra. I think we are with more, Henry. Uh, who else joined us? Uh, that he still can use uh, Teams. And I think that's something wonderful that not everyone has to um, have an account on Teams, but can just join actually from the, from the website. Yeah, good stuff. Evra? I haven't learned any new digital skills. So sorry, Henry, but I'll learn something <laughs> now this afternoon. <laughs> Understandable, Evro. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Leslie Tarabina with WTEC. Any yes. skills that you've learned recently? Yes, yes, yes. I'll learn how to edit video with Simora. So actually, four or five of you are into uh, video, eh? most of us. Uh, Shade? Hi everyone, good afternoon. All right, so this skill I've learned some recent. Um, also, the um, tool with Fumara, um, Adobe, and um, one other application like that, um, because we are trying to use it for our programs and also i've been trying to get more acquainted with some um, online virtual classrooms because we've been using it more for our programs so I've, i'm getting more used to the google classroom platform as well as the google meets um, platform too and um, also there's this application edmodo um, it's also a 
a virtual classroom. So I will try to use that too, as well as video animation. Basically, those ones. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks to everyone for sharing your experiences. Uh, the whole purpose of this uh, webinar, of course, is to better our understanding on the DCOM 2.1 platform. Uh, of course, our current project, Digital Generation Youth, also speaks when we, when we do our methodology about the specific platform. So yes, to better our understanding and if possible also to share some resources. Sandra will also share her experience with a DC for Jobs uh, and myself with the extra resources. In terms of time, we've allocated about an hour. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll be done by then. Uh, there will also be a little poll. Yes, we try and make it as interactive as possible. Uh, not too many slides, but uh, all your input will be highly uh, valued. Thank you. Uh, of course, the picture that you see there is the generic one that they, of course, use in terms of the five competency areas for uh, DCOM 2.1. Uh, in terms of the structure, the content, just a little bit of background. Of course, it was first published in 2013. Uh, there's, of course, more than one version. The current version 2.1 uh, is basically a reference framework for digital competencies for all citizens. Uh, Sandra actually said we need to uh, highlight the fact that the youth is for all citizens, young as well as old. Uh, it, the framework is very descriptive. In other words, it will more describe rather than prescriptive, uh, also highlighting the importance of all the competencies. And it can also be used in a very flexible and adaptable way. Uh, also for us, uh, it can be adapted to local goals as well as specific circumstances. Uh, from South Africa, we don't have a specific framework. So yes, this is of course one of the frameworks that we're also looking at to adapt to our local circumstances. More on the framework, it actually helps to define the what. That's very important, which competencies to address. And it's the responsibility of us, the stakeholders, the training providers, the organizations, we must actually figure out the how, the which method to perform more effectively when it comes to competency development. Uh, now, we already shared quite a few documents in terms of the whole framework. It should be under the resource folder in Slack. Uh, but just to give us an idea, again, in terms of the five competency areas on the left-hand side, there you can see it information and data literacy, communication, the digital content, the safety, as well as the problem solving. They will always refer to the 21 sub-competencies uh, on the right-hand side. If you add it all up, it will actually get, uh, you will actually get to 21. Uh, uh, of course, focusing more on your competency areas. Again, you can see one to three. Uh, basically, those type of competencies are very specific to uh, specific activities as well as users and then four and five the safety uh, the problem solving that's what we call your transversal type of competencies it can be applied to any competency uh, basically uh, so yes those are the five competency areas that the framework is actually focusing the next slide basically deals with the provi uh, proficiency levels and I actually want you to look at the layout basically there there's four overall levels on top foundation there's intermediate there's advanced as well as highly specialized then it's further broken up into what you call your granular levels uh, the complexities of the task so under foundation you can see it's very simple task uh, uh, intermediate is basically more it's well defined uh, are also non-routine problems, very straightforward, advanced, more difficult, most appropriate task, and when it's highly specialized, number seven, but there it's seven and eight is actually where you must be able to resolve more complex type of, of problems also. Then also further down the autonomy, you can either, again, through all the uh, levels, with guidance, without guidance, you must be able to on your own, and then at the last, at the bottom, your last row, 
basically also the cognitive domains that will actually apply to like remembering understanding so yes that's the the, the proficiency levels that's actually within the framework uh, they also refer to the different dimensions but i've also explained that the slide number seven and eight also actually explain that for you now so, for example um how you can use DIGCOM 2.1, the levels in your activities, is for example, when you go to the safety, um, so the safety level competence, it has four sub-levels for sub-competences. Uh, protecting devices, protecting personal data and privacy, protecting health and well-being, and protecting the environment. So we have chosen here for... Um, work a little bit further on protecting personal data and privacy and what you can see as example um, of um, uh, something to learn that can be here understand how to create strong passwords so that that can fit underneath the competence protecting personal data and privacy so this protecting personal data and privacy is written down in the DIGCOM 2.1 and you need to adapt it yourself with the right skills so or an activity so uh, uh, for this uh, comp sub competence you can do for example an activity of creating strong passwords when we look at um, foundation level so that's the the basic level uh, level one where um, a, a, a student need or a learner or a young person um, needs to uh, have a basic understanding of what for example strong passwords are and um, it's the learning will happen with support from somebody else so that's the competence level that the person needs to have so it doesn't need to do it by its own then you are thinking about level one and um what for example this is also an example of how to understand create strong passwords on level one foundational level is you can split it down in knowledge skills and autonomy the responsibility and independence uh, so for example on knowledge based uh, the person has basic knowledge of simple facts and views related to a profession and our domain or knowledge part. So here you can edit this skill and connect it with the activity that you are teaching. Understands how to create strong passwords. This is a basic, also a basic uh, information that is, that is created in this case by the Dutch national um, qualification level. So they give examples of what fits click which one fits for you and the poll is how important is it for you to create complicated passwords by using different letters numbers symbols upper and lower case letters etc we don't see your answer we see your answer but we don't see from who it is <laughs> and seven of seven people have voted um thank you so you can you all can see Person before sometimes create complicated passwords. Uh, one person often create complicated passwords, and five people out of seven always create complicated passwords. Then, yeah, thank you. Now end poll. So I can see that uh, I so one person has chosen for I use digital devices independently and can solve well-defined and non-routine problems um four out of uh, six people have chosen i use digital devices independently as well and um one person said i am at an advanced level creating solutions to complex problems and contribute professionally um, these questions are connected also with the levels that you have seen in dircom 2.1 so the proficiency, proficiency levels one to eight and uh, so they connect again with a level of um, which is connected with 
um, at least in Europe, with a formal education. So when you are on, um, on for example, on level six, you are uh, um, um, acting on higher education level. And uh, level uh, one is the, the low educational uh, level. I don't like to say low, but I don't know another English word for that. And we still haven't found that, I think. In terms of the proficiency levels in our country, of course, we have our national qualifications framework. Uh, in terms of the implementation of DIFCOM 2.1, these are simply guidelines to training organizations. Uh, they give you basically five steps. The first step, of course, to the adaptation and the specification, uh, more to the local population, to do some competency assessments, uh, step number three is that you have to train your trainers. You also have step number four, end user trainer, and of course, the recognition as well as certification. Uh, so those are basically just guidelines. You will also find this under your additional resources that we will share at the end uh, of our presentation. Thanks, Sandra. So time to discuss in breakout rooms. We will create uh, small breakout rooms uh, uh, probably in couples, so three breakout rooms. Um, and we ask you to discuss in your breakout rooms. Uh, the first item is choose an activity which is support digital competence developments of your learners and which you are running in your organization. Um, so it doesn't have to be right now or a previous one uh, or something that you have in mind. Um, so explain that. Um, share that with the other person and then the the second item to talk about is um check where in the digcom 2.1 fr framework this activity fits um or is part of what i actually shared with her an example was uh using websites uh foundational level where you can for example create an activity where you ask a learner which website do you use, uh, for example, to search uh, for job employment or your municipality, which website does your school use? So yes, very foundational. And that's what I actually shared with her. Any other feedback from the other breakout rooms? Okay, sure. So we looked at um, one of our programs, which is the Makerspace um, program which um, has different components to it, but the main ones that we talked about were website design and 3D modeling. Um, and we decided that website design uh, was more under competency three. So digital content creation, since they will be you know, creating content by coming up with the websites. Um, and then the 3D modeling uh, will also be content creation as well as presentation skills, which would be communication. Um, components would be more intermediate rather than foundational or advanced or highly specialized, since um, the idea is to get them to be able to uh, create something um, and solve problems uh, that they come up with. So that was basically our conversation. Thanks, Terere. Jaco and uh, Nerius? I can share. Uh, we basically spoke uh, about, uh, Jaco was telling a bit about how Ready for Life is uh, 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 covering different uh, uh, levels of proficiency. We have programs for foundational uh, uh, level, for intermediate and advanced, and one program which starts at level seven and le perhaps ending at eight. So as organization, they cover different levels. So people could go from one level to another, or one program to another, if they want and continue. In our case, because our organization is mainly working with educators, mastering technology for education, we would really go to the level of creating something like educa educational technologies. We would start somewhere intermediate and advanced, but we would never arrive to a level of uh, highly specialized, which involves in uh, using te technology and creating technology actually 
on this level. Okay, so we shared, our, I told her about our programs that we have for the VTEC. We have different programs. We have the camp and the makerspace project. And all the different projects varies. And the proficiency level that we are, it's advanced to my understanding because the students have to create their own soft problems, different problem, different problems for themselves. And also some of them have to solve problems without guidance. And some of these students also come back to facilitate. So that means they have advanced more probably by themselves. So now they come back to the camp and also help in facilitating. Yeah. We are going to uh, the Project DC for Jobs and uh, Breakthrough was part of the Project DC for Jobs, um, which is um, financed also by the European Commission. And we were trying to um, develop materials and uh, tools to start te teaching DC for Jobs competences. Um, so adapting it to the needs that the organizations in that project had and uh, which were uh, organizations from Romania, Spain, Latvia, the Netherlands and Germany. And um, so here you can see that we worked on f the five different uh, uh, skill zones and um, there has been decided that there's one soft skill zone added to that because next to those people said next to um, the, the the skills how to use digital competences you also need to have specific soft skills no. what we have done is um, we have created a campus online um, so there is diverse information about in a Moodle platform uh, where all competences are visible. There is a, uh, a big assessment um, for each competence zone. So people ask, uh, answer 10 questions on a specific uh, competence. So for example, safety, uh, and they score how, uh, how well developed they are on that specific competence. And then you have an outcome. For example, you have 80% score, and then you can decide as learner, do I, is it necessary to uh, join this specific part online, or do I go to another uh, competence zone, for, for example, problem solving, digital problem solving, and do the assessment there. So that's basically um, um, what the assessment is. And from there you go to um, content, uh, training content uh, which is and there we have seen that we needed to uh, make choices in what fits underneath for example safety there is a lot of information and there are a lot of possibilities under the skill safety and a lot of ways how to teach so there has been made some choices and I will share the content um, with you and also in the resources folder in Slack and uh, so you can search for more information there and I'm happy to support also there if you want that. Then um, when you have followed a sp for example the safety uh, course or the digital, digital content creation then you can earn badges and uh, the content which is in the um, online uh, environment is also based on a specific skill zone, so a specific level. We have started all these developments based on survey results. So we started uh, with, a, with a, uh, a survey before developing the, the, the material, the content, the training material. And um, this is a booklet. So you see now a picture of a booklet, so you don't need to read all the all the things on the side, the text, it's too long for here, but I will share also in resources this booklet where everything is more explained. And what you will see in this uh, little booklet is the results, the survey results per country. So here you can see, for example, the results of Germany. And um, what, is very, what was very interesting 
for us is to see specific points. So, for example, here in the research, we could we could see with the question with question which of the following do you use? Smartphone. Hundred percent of young people are using their smartphone. Um, so that means that if we want to reach young people, uh, the, a good way is to do it on smartphone. Um, and probably the training needs to be on smartphone. So it, it's supported with uh, specific uh, training materials development. Uh, here on the bottom, you can see the skill levels of users. So what you have done um, in the poll and just have talked about is also young people score themselves. And um, here in Germany, the basic level is, for example, only 4% of the young people is scoring themselves underneath where my cursor is. So, uh, so there's a lot of more information uh, on these survey results, uh, which is difficult, different for each country. So you can also read more about this. This is Latvia, uh, Cyprus, Spain. And then we go to Henry for additional resources. Thank you, Henry. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, based on some research that I've done on the platform, uh, of course, there's quite a lot of ebooks, e content, as well as some white papers. Uh, of course, I've shared all this under our resources in Slack, as well as on our Google Drive. Uh, basically, there's some guidelines for the adoption of DICCOM, uh, also some user guides, especially when it comes to e competencies. Uh, there's another one, Decomp in Action, which is actually quite good. Then there was also uh, another project, uh, DCDS, Digital Competencies Development Systems. There are basically four documents there. Uh, the piloting and evaluating report, the assessment tools, there's a wonderful trader handbook, as well as an organization's handbook. Uh, please go through those, uh, all available. Then uh, these are white papers uh, that I'm sharing some methods for digital literacy as well as teaching in the digital age. All these are available in Slack as well as on our Google Drive. Maybe some feedback from your side uh, that you find the webinar informative. Uh, are you able to apply the use of DIRCOM in your local environment? Uh, and also if you need more support and if yes, how as well as what? Hi, this is Ore. So it was really interesting. Um, I had gone through the um, Digicom 2.1 um, PDF document that was shared at the start of the project. But I think this um, webinar was really good in terms of illustrating the different competence areas and proficiency levels. And then during the breakouts, um, Tarere and I, so thankfully from the same organization, we were able to apply it to our upcoming program. So it was really useful. And um, at least I think we're going to go through the resources and we'll reach out, you know, to you and Sandra if we need any help. So I think we are definitely going to look at how to um, build that in and use the methodology for our programs. Uh, thanks, uh, Jaco. I think, uh, Henry, it's this is a really good framework that we should see how we can apply that here in South Africa, um, especially if there is already surface. And I can now have better understanding and grip actually what the DTCOM uh, 2.0 is. Um, I was a bit fake actually. Okay, I know that those documents are passed a bit through, but it gives me now a more clear view where we need to, uh, what we need to, to develop actually uh, to get it things done right actually in sort of, of in the right life. Uh, thanks, Jacob. Uh, Nerius, any feedback from your side? Uh, experiences maybe? For me, I think uh, I know the framework uh, quite uh, for some time and some tools which were developed by different organizations, how do you uh, self-assess your competence and so on. I think it's uh, helpful for uh, organizations to make the programs uh, more explicit with which uh, competences uh, you cover and offer and also at which level. So whenever, uh, if you are, let's say, NGO and working with uh, different uh, uh, digital literacy programs, 
you could actually link them with framework and you could say we do pretty much good work as any formal education system and i think this is the full right to, to say because you always can demonstrate by uh, evidence from evaluation feedback and so on so i think that's important for ngos to understand that by using this framework we can stand side by side like formal education at the content level i'm not saying at the general reputation or whatever because usually formal education we have more uh, in in terms of society what they can claim but i think that is a way to go thanks narius uh sandra um if i found it informative yes and <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm very happy no but i also I'm, um, I really like to hear how things work in, I, I was in, with Leslie in, in a breakout room to see how it works there. And um, so yes, informative for yes. Um, I still need, uh, I'm, I am uh, implementing DIGCOM in my um, work. I'm trying at least. Uh, I'm still struggling with finding the right level where, to, where it fits. Um, I also see that I jump from level one to level three with specific learners or and sometimes to level five or six. So I st I'm still learning how to use it. And I'm uh, for, for support, what I would really like is to, to chat with other partners who are working with it. And how do you recognize the activity, the skill level? And... Um, yeah, what are you learning there? How can we how can we make um, more visibility for the work that we are doing by adding this in our work? Yeah, so that's from my side, Henry. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra, for your feedback. Anyone else before we close our session? Uh, Sandra and myself do plan on having a, a follow up webinar that will be more specific in terms of activities, uh, and hopefully we will share some more information. Uh, with you soon. Uh, do you have any more slides, Sandra? No, I don't think I, so. This is then the last slide. Uh, I would then, on behalf of myself, Sandra, Ready for Life Breakthrough, would like to thank uh, all our partners for joining uh, the specific webinar uh, and also, of course, uh, assisting one another in going forward and understanding the platform but also making our project, Digital Generation Youth, uh, also successful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. Bye-bye and have a good weekend. <laughs> you Bye -bye. too. Bye. Thanks. Bye.